Ten years ago, America was rocked by unprecedented terror. Nearly 3,000 innocent lives were lost, and a post-9-11 world was born. Our war on terror begins with al-Qaeda, but it does not end there. It will not end until every terrorist group of global reach has been found, stopped, and defeated. Washington's military reach began with the hunt for Osama bin Laden. America strikes back. Afghanistan is pounded with bombs and missiles from the air and sea. Then, a preemptive pounding into Iraq. In the decade that followed, America's fight for freedom has been stained by torture, secret detention, and rendition. Human rights violations, symbolized by landmarks like Guantanamo Bay, Abu Ghraib, and the Bagram Air Base Prison. We had garnered the empathy, not only of the world, but the Muslim world. And if we had the courage to be vulnerable, uh, we would be far safer and more secure than we are today. Instead, we drank deep from that very dark elixir of nationalism. Journalist and author Chris Hedges says America's terror unleashed throughout the Middle East has opened a Pandora's box of evils. Estimates are over a million Iraqi dead since the invasion. Um, you know, hundreds and hundreds of civilians killed in Pakistan, thousands killed in Afghanistan, not to mention millions of people displaced into refugee camps. I mean, the, the terror that we have unleashed uh, will not go unpaid. Uh, it is, uh, and, and it will strike us eventually. However, in a post-9-11 America, citizens have been forced to compromise their freedom in the name of security. The past decade has paved way for new state practices, such as warrantless wiretapping, intrusive airport screening, and greater authority for law enforcement, what some call a police state in the making. As this national security state grows, as it becomes easier for the government to scrutinize, scrutinize us in all aspects of our lives, I think Americans are growing deeply, deeply worried about this. Um, the issue of danger uh, is larger than just that from specific isolated foreigners. It is a danger that is all around us, and much of it may be right here at home from people in our own country. Since 9-11, a rising tide of Islamophobia has passed through this formerly tolerant nation. According to the FBI, the four men intended to carry out their plan today. Dozens of Muslim Americans have been arrested and convicted in so-called FBI foil terror plots. Plots that were orchestrated and manufactured by government-paid informants. These cases have been created by the government, and yet we're supposed to feel safer because criminals that would not have come up with the plot had it not been brought to them on a platter by the U.S. government uh, are now in jail. We have, you know, snowballed the violence that's going on around the world, only raised more hatred, only raised more bad feelings, only um, reinforced many narratives, very many violent, you know, narratives of American imperialism around the world. And we, I think we've created more enemies than friends. You know, we... Uh, targeted communities rather than making them partners. Not only has it not made us any safer, I think that it has undermined, you know, uh, the, the very fabric of American society. The fabric of a post-9-11 America. But the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of al-Qaeda. Still waging war in the name of freedom. America's campaign against terror began as a personal strike back. But in the 10 years that followed, a military crusade to promote peace has fueled more vengeance, danger, and insecurity around the world. The man behind 9-11 may have been captured, but international safety has yet to be delivered. Marina Portnaya, RT, New York.